Hi, this is Dr. A with a clinical chemistry review video. We're going to look at hyper and hypocalcemia. So let's start with hypercalcemia. So hypercalcemia is a blood calcium level above the expected normal range. Um, a normal range could be 8.6 to 10.0 milligrams per deciliter. Obviously refer to your lab reports normal range reference range. The binding of calcium to other substances has to be taken into account when you consider total calcium levels because half of the blood calcium is actually bound to proteins and the other half is there as ionized calcium. So then patients that have low serum albumin, which is a protein, would be expected to have low total calcium, but then probably normal ionized calcium levels because the low albumin would simply mean that there's low calcium because there's just not enough albumin to carry the calcium. The opposite is going to be true with patients with high serum albumin. You would expect them to have higher total calcium values. Now, I will tell you that it is way more common for your patients to have low serum albumin than it is for them to have high serum albumin. And uh, primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common cause of hypercalcemia in the outpatient setting. Some of the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia. So central nervous system, we have lethargy, decreased alertness, um, depression, confusion, forgetfulness, again, being less alert, less oriented, um, and then also a coma. GI, it would be anorexia, so lack of appetite, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. Renal, it would be uh, it impairs the kidney's ability to concentrate urine, so then that can lead to dehydration, so dehydration would be a sign and symptom. Um, and you also, there would be an increased risk of kidney stones, especially those calcium oxalate kidney stones. In the skeletal system, you will see increased bone resorption and an increased bone demineralization and an increased risk of fracture, which seems counterproductive because you have high calcium levels, but it's that doesn't mean there's uh, it's high blood calcium. It doesn't mean you have a lot of calcium in your bones. Uh, and in, in the cardiovascular system, uh, it can cause or exacerbate hypertension, which is high blood pressure. So let's go over the causes of hypercalcemia. So first we have the primary hyperparathyroidism. That's the most common. Uh, there's also secondary or tertiary, hyper, tertiary hyperparathyroidism. So secondary would be hyperparathyroidism that is coming from because of kidney failure or vitamin D deficiency. And then the tertiary one is an autonomous production of parathyroid hormone. Uh, they can be calcium sensing receptor abnormalities um, and some of the other endocrine disorders such as hyperthyroidism uh, where you would see an increased resor resorption and hypercalcemia because of that high metabolism uh, and the PTH levels would be low. In Addison's disease, in the Addisonian crisis, PTH levels are, are low. Um, if it gets, it gets corrected promptly with fluids and steroid replacement, it is thought really to be a result of hypovolemia and dehydration. Uh, there's also cancer-mediated hypercalcemia, and then often you can see the higher levels of hypercalcemia you'll see with cancer patients. Um, granulomatous diseases, different medications such as lithium and vitamin D toxicity, uh, renal diseases, and other there are other causes too. So let's dive into the endocrine causes of hypercalcemia. So primary hyperparathyroid is again the most common cause of hypercalcemia in an outpatient setting. The physiologic uh, defect in, it could be a physiologic defect in the parathyroid gland themselves or the result of an adenoma or hyperplasia of the parathyroid glands. Hypervitaminosis D, so excessive amounts of vitamin D, um, could be caused by an excessive intake of vitamin D or an aberrant production of the 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D, which is the active form of vitamin D. Uh, and then cancers and tumors, they cause a release of a hormone or hormone-like substance that's called parathyroid hormone-related protein. So that's what PTHRP stands for. So some of the biochemical chem findings in primary hyperparathyroidism, which is PHPT, which is, again, the most common cause of hypercalcemia. So obviously you see hypercalcemia, but then also hypophosphatemia because uh, calcium and phosphate will move in opposite directions. So if calcium goes up, phosphate will go down. Um, and so that, par that uh, excess parathyroid hormone will induce phosphaturia. So you're losing the phosphate in your urine. You will see ele elevated parathyroid hormones relative to the serum calcium and or you can see inappropriately normal parathyroid hormone in the face of hypercalcemia. 
you can see low to normal 25 hydroxy vitamin D and a high normal or elevated 30% to 30% elevation of 125 to hydroxy vitamin D, the active form of vitamin D, due to that parathyroid hormone and then enhancing renal hydroxylation, which is that step where you get 125 to hydroxy vitamin D. The urinary calcium excretion is going to be elevated because you have high levels in the blood, if you'll end up with high levels in the urine. And you can also see a metabolic hyperchloremic acidosis because uh, the chloride is exchanged for the phosphate as the phosphate is being cleared from the blood to the urine. Um, and then you can also see an elevated serum alkaline phosphatase in severe disease. Another condition is familial hypocalciuric calpercalcemia. It is a benign con condition uh, and it's a germline mutation of that calcium sensing receptor. Uh, and if you look at it within the name, so it's familial, so it's inherited. So hypocalciuric, so you will have low calcium in the urine, but high calcium in the blood, right? So you have a stable mild hypercalcemia from birth with a hypocalciuria. So again, low amount of calcium in the blood, but a high amount of calcium in the so lower amount of calcium in the urine, but high amount of calcium in the blood. The serum calcium will be elevated. You'll see mild to moderate elevation. The serum magnesium is going to be mildly elevated. The parathyroid hormones can be mildly elevated. And the urine calcium levels are typically less than 100 milligrams in 24 hours with a fractional excretion of the urine calcium of less than 1%. So um, you will also see mu the mutant calcium sensor receptor gene can be demonstrated. And then some end organ dysfunction in the bone and kidneys is uncommon, therefore usually surgery is not performed. Uh, an organ system causes of hypercalcemia, we have milk alkali syndrome, also known as Burnett syndrome. Um, it results from an ingestion of large amounts of calcium together when absorb with an absorbable alkali. So an example would be, for example, milk and baking soda, uh, but maybe not taken together, but a patient that ingests a lot of both. Uh, why would they do that? Maybe to have a peptic ulcer. Uh, milk comes coats and relieves uh, the burning and also the, the baking soda can that neutralize acid and so it's kind of a, a common remedy for that uh, and in those um, milk alkali syndrome the parathyroid hormone level is going to be low because the calcium is high also renal failure uh, you see renal excretion of both calcium and phosphate that is severely impaired because the kidneys aren't working so it can't get rid of that calcium and phosphate and the production of that active form of vitamin D is also limited and um, therefore PTH secretion is going to be stimulated. The medications that can cause hypercalcemia are thiazide diuretics. They're used to treat hypertension. They're fluid pills, if you will, um, and they can cause retention of glomerularly filtered calcium. The lithium uh, used to treat bipolar affective disorder appears to shift the set point of the calcium sensing receptor. And vitamin A, um, it's believed to activate osteoclasts and enhance bone resorption, which then elevates blood calcium, but your PTH and your 125 dihydroxy vitamin D will be suppressed. So next we have hypocalcemia. Uh, it is the state of blood calcium levels being below the expected range. Uh, again, refer to your lab reference ranges. Um, so generally it'd be levels below 8.6 milligrams per deciliter. And is, um, hypocalcemia is best measured using ionized calcium. Uh, I will have another, I have another video on testing for calcium. The signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia are uh, the neuromuscular ones are tetany in the hands, feet, legs, and back. So that's like muscle cramps, if you will. Um, for stick signs and uh, the numbness and tingling in the face, hands, and feet. Uh, the central nervous system is going to be irritability, seizures, personality changes, impaired intellectual functioning. And the cardiovascular ones are going to be uh, QT prolongation on that EKG and uh, electromechanical disassociation.
and the causes of hypocalcemia. So we have endocrine causes, hypoparathyroidism or the lack of parathyroid hormone. Um, this is can be due to being post-op. Uh, if there was surgery around uh, the parathyroid glands and stuff, it can be autoimmune, either isolated or as part of a polyglandular autoimmune syndrome. It could be congenital mutations in that calcium sensing receptor or in parathyroid hormone or in par or parathyroid uh, gland aplasia. Uh, and also pseudohypoparathyroidism, just all different endocrine causes. Um, deficiency of vitamin D, and I would say probably this is going to be a more common one uh, due to malnutrition or malabsorption due to celiac screw or massive weight loss, the gastric surgeries because they interfere with absorption of nutrients, short bowel syndrome, any abdominal irritation, uh, irritable bowel type stuff, inflammatory bowel disorders and all of that pancreatic diseases, liver diseases, or renal diseases can all lead to this deficiency of vitamin D. Uh, and then also we don't get outside enough. And then hypomagnesemia, which is another common cause because um, chronic diseases and chronic stress tend to lead to hypomagnesemia. And so the magnesium depletion leads to a lack of parathyroid hormone synthesis and release. So a little bit more on those endocrine causes of hypocalcemia. Okay, so hypoparathyroidism can be a result of neck surgery because of the removal of or damage to the parathyroid hormone, maybe as they're doing like a thyroid surgery, or maybe they are actually doing parathyroid hormone sur surgery or some kind of neck surgery. The autoimmune destruction of the parathyroid tissue, the mutations in the parathyroid gene, um, abnormal deposition of copper or aluminum in the parathyroids, and magnesium deficiency and uh, there's also again pseudohypoparathyroidism which is a lack of responsiveness to parathyroid hormone hypovitaminosis d again listed as a lack of vitamin d and tertiary hyperparathyroidism is an autonomous hypersecretion of the uh, parathyroid hormone which can then cause also hypocalcemia Organ system causes of hypocalcemia, so the intestinal disorders that result in an inadequate calcium or vitamin D absorption. So again, short bowel syndrome, dumping syndrome, celiac screw, dumping syndrome is often seen after the bariatric weight loss surgeries um, where they're taking part of the stomach and intestines out. Celiac screw, celiac disease where you have a wheat intolerance. Uh, but again, a lot of the inflammatory bowel disorders and all that could uh, result in inadequate calcium or vitamin D absorption. Um, and uh, usually they, you know, lead to threaten hypocalcemia and you have increased uh, parathyroid hormone secretion. The renal insufficiency or renal failure, so a lot of people have chronic kidney disease and chronic renal failure, um, and that is going to be the hypocalcemia is going to be a result of hyperphosphatemia because again, they move in opposite directions and if the kidneys can't clear the phosphates, uh, the phosphates will accumulate and the calcium is going to drop. Uh, but also it could be due to the defective metabolism of vitamin D. And remember, you need, you need vitamin D to be able to properly absorb calcium in the intestines. If you can't metabolize that vitamin D, you don't have that active vitamin D, then you can't absorb the calcium. The, and then the genetic defects that result in an impaired ability to recover filtered calcium from the tubular fluids and reabsorb it and put it back into the blood. And those are the causes of hyper and hypocalcemia and all of that.